Hey guys, today we're going to review the Productivity Project, written by Chris Bailey. And by the end of the video, you will learn what Chris Bailey learned through a year of productivity experiments. And you'll also get some new information on an awesome new self-development slash business slash psychology website and forum I'm going to be launching. So everyone's seen those paths at school, college, or even at your local park where everyone walks. There is no sidewalk there, but the dirt is trampled upon. These are called desire paths. And what one college did was, they got rid of all the sidewalks in their college. Then they waited for these desire paths to appear, and they remapped their sidewalks so that they could be used more efficiently. And this productivity project is basically Chris's desire path. So the first tip I have to give you is to every day start your day with a list of three things that you want to accomplish by the end of the day. And why three? It's because it's easy to remember and it's doable. When you make this list, it helps you find out what you want to do and what you don't intend on doing. It forces you to prioritize your work. For example, for me it would be 1. Read a book, 2. Have lunch with my dad, and 3. Write a thousand words on a psychology related article. Now the second tip is to know the difference between the time economy and the knowledge economy. 100 years ago robots didn't exist, which means that time could be sold for money. It's still possible today, but we're moving into more of a knowledge economy, where the more you know, the more you will earn. This is like brute force robotic behavior versus problem solving and content creation. So the reason we need to become more productive is so that we can learn more and that we can do more and create more. Chris says that the essence of productivity is turning knowing into doing. Now the third thing I'd like to talk about is that Chris did an experiment where he worked 90 hours a week and the next week he would work 20. And what he found through logs is that he didn't improve much. There wasn't much productivity difference between when he worked 90 hours and 20 hours. Something he did notice though is that he felt more productive. He wasn't necessarily more productive, but he felt it. And this is because a law that is called Parkinson's Law. It means that a task will swell or shrink to fit the time allotted to it. So to bypass this, what you can do is give a task an artificial deadline. If you have a whole month to do it, set a deadline in the next 30 minutes to finish it. Because you will put it off and you will put it off and you will put it off and you'll never get it done. So set an artificial deadline and you'll get it done quicker. And it's also easier to start something that has a limit of 30 minutes as opposed to something that might take three days. If you can create this artificial deadline, you'll get started on it quicker and you'll finish it quicker. And this is a little bit where Chris talks about the desire paths to where if this is something that you actually want, something that you actually desire, then you won't put it off as much. You'll be more prone to do it anyways. The fourth thing that I'd like to talk about is maintenance days. So basically, everyone has these things in their lives where they have to like cook a meal or go buy groceries, do their laundry, and maybe even make a trip to the mail office. Now one thing you can do is you can batch these tasks to save your time. You can group going to the grocery and the mail office at the same time. This might save you 10 or 15 minutes getting in and out of the house. And instead of cooking your meal every night, you can cook it all in one night and separate it up. The next tip I'd like to give you is outsourcing unimportant stuff. Now this is things that are like maintenance tasks, but they can be done and trusted by someone else. So let's say you value your time at $50 an hour or $100 an hour. Do you really want to be wasting $100 doing dishes for 30 minutes? Or something else that is unmeaningful and you won't be remembered for when you die? This is where it's cheaper to pay someone $10 an hour, like a high school student, to organize a spreadsheet. This gives you the time to do more meaningful and more high return productivity things. But I should also note that just like Tim Ferriss says in the 4 hour work week, finding a good virtual assistant or even someone to outsource your work for you can be difficult and quite a hassle. But in the long term, if you find someone that is worth it, the return on investment is great. The sixth is that you should try to turn your to-do list into a waiting for list. Instead of having a whole bunch of stuff that you should do, write down why you haven't already done it. Write down what you're waiting for. On most of these lists, there's something that is causing you to wait. And most of the time, it's generally just a mental barrier. Now, sometimes it might be like you haven't made that trip to a city 30 minutes away because your car needs fixed. But most of the time, it's just a mental barrier. Be careful, though, of to-do lists because they can be a bunch of small meaningless tasks that gives you an endorphin rush just crossing them off. And if you need to, you can turn this into your advantage. Use it as motivation. Write four things down that you know you can accomplish, and then a fifth thing that is a little bit of a stretch. That way, when you get all four things done and you go to the fifth, some people like me, who really want to just cross everything off the list, it'll give them that extra motivation to finish that last task. But don't rely on these to-do lists. Focus on the three things that you started your day with. Now let's talk about the website I plan on launching for a little bit. There's going to be all kinds of psychological effects and psychological hacks you can do, along with in-depth explanations of logical fallacies and cognitive biases, and all kinds of business and other helpful articles. Now this stuff will all be free, but there will also be a paid part of the website, in which, after you pay, you can view my future videos 48 hours in advance, and see all of my YouTube analytics. You'll also be able to start local threads in the forum. Free members will be able to reply, but only paid members can start a thread. 
You'll also be able to vote on future book reviews and the background music that I pick. And when you sign up, you'll get an automatic entry into free giveaways, which I'll be doing a lot of in the future. Eventually, when I release books and ebooks, you will get first dibs to review them. And you'll also get dibs at job opportunities at Practical Psychology. And best of all, you'll be helping out this channel. You'll be supporting it in the best way possible. Now, if you leave a suggestion of a feature that I should add to this website to get more members to sign up in the comments below, if I pick it and I use it, I will give you a free year of membership. And also, leave a comment saying that you would join, and when I launch the website, I'll give you a free month. I'm thinking $5 a month would be a great membership price. If you enjoyed this video, check out my video on the procrastination puzzle and 1% Better's video on 15 secrets that successful people know. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy this animated book review. Remember to start your day with three things, learn how to batch tasks, and understand that your time is more valuable than doing simple things like taking out the trash.